And so my mother is our special guest today. I'm going to ask her to come up here. My mother uh, just felt led uh, to write a little booklet that's about eight, ten pages long, and it deals with the grief and the loss that you go through as a, a, a and for her perspective. As I wanted to kind of interview her and have a little fun with this. I am not a professional interviewer, and she is not a professional interviewee. But, Mom, as we start this, let me just say that you are basically under oath here before God, and you have to give an account for everything you say, and so what you say must be truthful. Okay. So with that in mind, who's your favorite kid? Well, I, think I, have, I, know. I have many children, and I want each one of them to feel that they are the most important. That's not the answer I was looking for. Anyways. It's me. The youngest is always the one of the things about my mom's booklet and about my mom's life, the thing that has uh, changed her the most is her faith in Jesus Christ. Can you just for a second, just take a couple seconds and explain how you came to know Christ as your Savior? Well, I was born into a Christian family. And at a very early age, I realized that I needed Jesus as my Savior. And one Sunday morning, I was sitting next to my dad. And I said, Daddy, i got to go forward. And so he took me up to the altar where I asked Jesus into my heart. And it was the best day of my life. Amen. And then uh, you met, you were born Pat Wade, but you are Pat Sheridan now. And you met Bruce Sheridan, my dad. Tell me about when you met him. Give me that first picture. Okay. Um, my family had just... to this one area and we were looking for a church Highland and, Park yes so the Highland little city Park. inside Detroit right outside of Detroit oh. okay and uh, we went to this church this one Sunday night it was a Baptist church and I went in and sat we sat close to the back and I looked up to the choir loft and I saw this young man walk in the minute I saw him I loved him didn't know his name, knew nothing about him. I loved him, and I knew at that moment I was going to marry him one day. How and old I were did. You? How old were you? I was 12. And how old was he? He was 13. And you started dating how old? Too early. Too early, um, but. Well, we didn't really date, 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 but we were went with our youth group to all kinds of activities. Our church at that time had a large group of young people, and we went to all the activities. But of course, somehow, I always sat by him. And anyway, um, yes, we were married. But I didn't tell him for years that I knew I was going to marry him. I waited, and then we were married. I, I remember my dad saying this. He kissed one girl his whole life. One girl. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I think they all assumed that. Well, because of that, we go to our next one. Uh, my mom, this is all my brothers and sisters. I uh, had seven kids, and how many grandkids do you have? I have 23. 23, yeah. But I have two, we have two children in heaven that the Lord took as babies, and so I have nine all together. I have two of my brothers. I yes. only have two brothers. My two brothers, Bruce and Bill, are down here. Wave your hand. Yeah, there you go. You don't have to applaud them. <laughs> I know things about them. Don't applaud. But anyway, so uh, you married on December 13th, 1958. Right. And uh, you have seven kids and uh, 23 grandkids and everything. And Tell me a little bit about January 5th, 2000. Well, we had just gotten through the Christmas season, and I was taking down our Christmas trees, one of them, 
when I went upstairs to check on my husband, because he was sleeping in a little bit that morning, and lo and behold, he didn't move. And so I ran downstairs and my son Bill called for help. And when I went back upstairs and I touched his shoulder just to let him know, everything's gonna be okay. I knew it was, he was gone. But at that very moment, God's spirit just touched my heart and said, you're gonna be all right. And I knew from that moment on that no matter what happened for the next, now it's been two, over 12 years, that I would be all right. And I think that's what we as Christians have to remember, that when we trust the Lord for the salvation of our soul, we need to trust him with our lives because he loves us and he wants nothing but the best for us. And when that first happened and the days afterward were very difficult, they were. But I knew enough of scripture to know that the Lord would take care of me and that this all happened for a reason. We all have a date to meet the Lord. And so I wanted to do something. I was only in my late 50s and I wanted to uh, make something of my life. I wanted to help people if possible. And so I prayed and asked God, please help me to be a help to others. And lo and behold, I cannot tell you how many good things and good people have come into my life. And I've tried to go out of my comfort zone right now. And oh, it's like you're uncomfortable up here. Yeah. You wonder where I learned to preach? Anyway, um, I don't think we call upon the Holy Spirit and as our comforter to help us, and he certainly will, because he has certainly helped me. So what's sort of that event or different events? Because I know during the funeral, we were all gathered rallying around you, and just it was one of the largest funerals I've ever seen and everything. And, uh, but eventually, everybody went home. When did it hit? What caused it? Was there a specific event, or was there a little events? Or when did the, the weight of everything really start to hit? What triggered that? Well, I think when everyone went home the next morning, I woke up at the usual time, four or five in the morning, and he wasn't there. And I, I just knew that I had to get through this period. So I played a little game with myself. I would say on Monday morning, well, he'll be back on Friday. And then I'd get busy doing something. Then on Friday, I'd say, well, he'll be back on next Tuesday. My husband was out of town quite a bit on, uh, for his work. And so this helped me for a few weeks. But then one day I sat down and I said, Lord, I can't grieve anymore. I can't cry anymore. Um, it just, it, it didn't help me to heal. It hurt to relive the funeral parts of it that I remembered. And so I wanted to make a change in my life. And I think that does help you when you are going through a grieving period, especially if you've lost your husband or your wife or a child. I started doing things differently at home. Now, I, I wanna, we're going to get into that in just one second, some of the things you did. But there's a few things that I noticed that you did. And maybe just say something about this, and we'll get into some practical things. But I always thought that you embraced the fact that Dad did pass away. There was an embracement, and, and I always remember you saying that you felt honored. Because I remember saying to my mom, how do you sleep in the same bed and stay in the same room? And, and, and I remember my mom saying, I feel an honor because Jesus was here. Right. And he met him here and was taken here in this place. And, and you never ran from it. You didn't live in no. denial or no. different other things. And so things that you helped you, first of all, was your faith. Yes. You spoke about it. Yes, that. my faith. And knowing that Christ had a plan. Right. Uh, second thing that my mom did, and it's a, in the book or the booklet too, and it, this is advice for some of you with depression or grief in any area. This lady never stops. Never stops. I have a hard time getting her at home on the phone because she doesn't have a Love cell it. phone. You need a cell phone. Well, I have one in my car. But she doesn't turn it on. I don't turn it on. It's for emergencies. What is that? But my mom never stops. She she 
supports missionaries, she works for people, she serves people. Being, it's not just being busy, but it's being working with a purpose in a ministry, isn't it? Yes. Can you say something a little bit about that? Yes. Um, like I said, I really did not need a job, but I thought and to get out into the world, because I had been a homemaker with my children and my husband, and so I went out, <clears throat> and I, first I thought, what would I like to do? Well, nothing is more important to me than babies and children. And so I went down to the corner <clears throat> of my street, and there was a, um, was a, a learning center daycare, and I applied for a job. And I was so surprised they hired me. And I have been there almost 12 years now. <clears throat> And with that job, so many opportunities have opened the door for me to be a witness to these young girls. I love being with college girls. And after I started, um, uh, when I first started, they're called a floater. And then I, I started getting higher positions. And now I'm in leadership there. And I had to go back to school in order to keep my job. So I started taking classes from Michigan State extension classes, and I've been doing that for five years. And that opened a door to meeting more young people, more young girls that were taking these early development classes. And it's just snowballed. It's, we've, I've had one young woman saved, and that has been such a blessing to me that she gave her heart to Jesus. So I know God has everything in his plan. And if my husband had not passed away, I would never have met this young woman, and she would not have been saved. And so I'm so glad that God was able to use me in that way, in a very small way. But that was such a blessing. Before we